Pechacucha 84, Art Fundamentals, Chapter 1. Uh, so I read the first chapter of a book I kind of talked about r reading a couple of weeks ago. I was about to move on to the second chapter, and then I thought, you know, let me actually see if I can apply what I learned in the first chapter, if I learned anything. Uh, this is the book in question. Um, it's basically an overview, a beginner's overview of art, uh, broken down by chapter into things you need to know. Uh, and the contributors to the book are all industry digital artists currently working or who used to. And the chapter one is about uh, light and shadow, and the, the guy in question worked on Assassin's Creed 3 as the concept artist, so you know he's he's earning his keep. Uh, this page discusses the same things as the uh, that previous book I talked about, uh, Understanding the Face, the Head, or whatever it was called. Uh, he doesn't just talk about like light and reflective light and that as well. He also ties it values into like color temperature, which is kind of like I feel it's like putting one of the most advanced things next to one of the, the the simplest things. But then if you learn all of this at the start, it makes you better going forward. Color temperature is something I'm really not all that familiar with. Uh, so yeah, the the artist recommended like uh, using a nine value system: three darks, three mid tones, and three lights. So I kind of just went to Manga Studio and started playing around, seeing what those values would be from 0 which is black to 100 which is uh, white uh, and it reminded me of a video I saw by Cycra called The Value Game which might help me recognize values by sight but it's not quite what I thought it was it's uh, it's really about right someone someone applies values and then you have to guess what they are but it's trial and error and you have as many attempts as you want so it doesn't really I don't know I'm not sure it's so helpful uh, but as I was clicking on the video, uh, I got an advert for an Adobe character creator, which, since I have the Adobe suite, I have access to, which means maybe I could mocap animation, uh, facial animation and stuff. I should look at this because I own it. I should play around with it because it could be useful to make some videos and stuff. Yeah, so uh, I thought, let me, you know, as I was reading the first chapter, I had this idea in my head of it, like a picture of Wesker with like red lighting, really dark. Uh, and I thought, yeah, I'm going to try and pick values and represent that. But then it's like, it's almost like getting too complicated too fast. So I just thought, you know what, let's just go look at a picture of Wesker and see what Wesker looks like. Let's just use the chalk brush. Just have fun. Um, it's funny because I know that I got the proportions wrong and I couldn't be bothered to fix them. <laughs> his, uh, his face is narrower. Uh, but I, I was just kind of playing around. And then after using the chalk brush, I thought, you know, let's let's see how how accurate a representation I can get using only uh, airbrushing, which is it's really good for like gradation of of like tone and color, but texture is is difficult to achieve. You can always add it afterwards with other things. And then I colored it, and it it doesn't look great, but it doesn't look bad. And you know, for a guy who doesn't really know what he's doing with airbrushes, I think it's okay. Probably my favorite thing of the whole experience was actually doing Wesker's checkerboard leather vest thing, which is so ridiculous as a texture and as a thing to represent. Uh, and of course, as irony would have it, uh, Wolfenstein 2's DLC comes with these uh, kind of not quite animated cutscenes. They're uh, still images in a comic book style, flat coloured, uh, where you know the background shifts, but there's no an actual animation, and I think there's three separate DLCs. If that was um, one of them, this is another one of them, and I think the lady with the eye patch is voiced by Claudia Black. But I'm just taking a stab in the dark. It's neither here nor there, but you know maybe this is the kind of thing I should be looking at because I know this guy just knocked them out in Photoshop with a, with a couple of ink brushes, coloured them with flats, and went on his merry way. Uh, and then of course. I find something that's like the opposite, where someone is taking uh, line work and then straight colors over the line work to remove the the black outlines, but you know uh, they're still there because they're represented with tonal values. And he makes a mess and then he cleans it up afterwards, which is quite cathartic. So maybe I could look at that. And then I found a uh, someone coloring a picture of. Captain Marvel and about halfway th through it looked like it was finished but then he kept going messing around with like lighting adjustments like using filters and layers uh, 
kind of overdoing and redoing things. I don't know. It's more effort than I'd put in. Um, I drew a picture of the Predator. You can see it here. Uh, in reference to seeing some Predator DLC for a game I didn't buy that I would never buy because it looks terrible. But any excuse for me to draw a picture of Predator is good for me. is is fine enough. Uh, I coloured it. Uh, pretty typical colouring for me. I tried to use uh, a shading system that I got from like the books. Like two lights, two darks uh, for the skin. Nothing, you know, no, no nine scale values here. Yeah, and then I added a background, and then I added some kind of like reflective light from the jungle, and like direct light from, you know, the sun. And because I was kind of, I did the leaves blurry, it really creates a strong sense of like depth. The predator is behind them, and of course I added shading as well. So I think, you know, it's not the best thing ever, but it's better than I typically do. And then the highlight of the week is I found an incredibly janky animation if you can call that a string of slideshows where all the audio was generated by automated voice garfield <laughs> garfield uh, has some lasagna and then kills himself it's hilarious it's ren and stimpy insane with like microsoft paint art it's, it's i feel like i need to do something like this because it's ah uh, it's it's so good so i saw a couple of motivational videos you know i get all kinds of stuff in the queue on YouTube. And you know, someone said, like, if you win the first hour of the day, you win the day. Uh, and it's also a good idea to try and win the last hour. And I thought, you know what, that's, I could do that. I think that'll help me push the Smiley Show out. So we're going to try that next week and see what happens. Um, I will, in the first hour, just do Smiley Show. It will, obviously, I won't stop an hour in. But the last hour, I will dare I say, try and make myself more employable from a graphic design design perspective. So I will actually try and graphic design my CV like I, I want a job as a graphic designer and then try and create something of a small graphic design portfolio. We'll see how, how quickly I sour on that idea, but whatever. That's the end of Pecha Kucha 84 and I'll see you next time.